Y'all give a huge round of applause for Nancy. Thank you. Nancy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, this is the, um, the theme for this month and I was pulling something together last, okay, just in full transparency. Had we done this on the 19th, uh, y'all would have had one slide. Uh, and that was a fantastic sunrise. Uh, but we had a couple of weeks and I had a few minutes and uh, Eric and Natalie were gracious to let me send it a day later, even after I had two weeks. And so what I really am striving for right now uh, is to be present. And so even though we are talking about rising and that is the call to action, the most important part, I believe, is for us to be present. And so if you have to leave now, I hope that that is the thing that you take with you, is to be here right now. And so I should start with thanking um, Creative Mornings for having me here, and for Natalie and Andrea Joy and, and uh, Ariel and everyone that made this possible. I have a tendency to jump to tasks and not think about the people part of, um, and so I'm trying to make sure I do that. I'm going to put this down because there, I'm gonna switch to the next slide. Uh, so this image, I usually, when I talk about myself, because people are like, who are you and how did you get here? Um, I usually have a photo of my parents' garden circa 2016, because uh, if you know about me, a lot of what got me here uh, is being the oldest of six kids growing up in a small town in rural Louisiana, and we grew most of the food that we ate. And I was in 4-H and FFA. I went to LSU, studied horticulture, um, worked as an intern for um, crop protection chemicals company in the summer, went to Cornell, studied plant pathology and weed science and did research there, and then moved to Omaha to work with farmers uh, in uh, counties right outside of Omaha. And then um, proceeded to have uh, four children in five years, um, and then worked in many different things from academia through technology. And then while I was doing the technology job, I founded No More Empty Pots. This image, uh, instead of the garden, is a photo of a lake in, in my hometown. This past year, uh, we had um, an unusual opportunity uh, to be present and come together with each other. Um, and I haven't talked about this for a while, and so uh, there is still emotion with this. Um, but um, I'm the oldest of six, but the third, um, her name uh, is Rita, and she passed away uh, last year. And she was a few months shy of her 50th birthday. And this is an image from one morning that I went out, we were staying uh, at a little bungalow because small towns don't be having hotels you want to stay in. Uh, and so I went, we, we were staying in this bungalow and this is an, a photo of being out on the lake early one morning before we were going in to do the funeral and stuff. And I thought this is the image that I want to share about rising and connecting me to, um, to my hometown because it was a fantastic morning uh, and the sun was reflecting and there was a calmness to it and there there's sadness when you lose someone that is close to you and you're not you feel like that that shouldn't happen but there's also resilience and coming through that and out of that and our family is much stronger and much more connected um, after this event and it also made me so grateful. Uh, I was sad that she wasn't here anymore. Of course, I felt like I didn't do enough as the oldest kid and all of those things, but the gift of being present with her when we had her means more than so many things that I ever thought would in my life. So I wanted to share, that's how, this is how I'm sharing how I got here. One other thing that I was gonna do was, um, read um, a poem, like an excerpt of a poem, and that took, I always spend more time talking about how I got here. But uh, this is an excerpt from On the Pulse of Morning by Maya Angelou. Praying for a dream, 
Here, root yourselves beside me. I am that tree planted by the river, which will not be moved. I am yours. And that's all that I will read about that. The reason I wanted to say that now is because I grew up also in a uh, Baptist church. We went to something associated with church like four days a week. And one of the, it reminded me of one of the spirituals of I shall not be moved. I'm like a tree uh, by the water and I will not be moved. So find your space, find your water, find your movement and root yourselves. Uh, sometimes it is not the physical, but is metaphorical in the people in the community. And it feels like Creative Morning is one of those communities that could be the water that you root yourselves in. Uh, this is an, an image, uh, so fair warning, all of these are sunrises and sunsets. Uh, <laughs> That, that's all there is. Uh, I started to do something different, but I decided um, that I wanted to lean into this, this thought about how you have to go through adversity to uh, get to a place of resilience and rising again, um, and how that leads to hope and determination. Um, and there was something about wallowing um, and to not stay there, but I have to say, I love wallowing. I feel like um, when, when we allow ourselves to wallow, then we allow ourselves to feel the feelings in the moment. And what I've learned uh, over these years uh, is that so many of us don't feel the feelings and we block things off and we make ourselves numb and we think we're living, but we're actually not. And when we allow ourselves to wallow, we allow ourselves to break out of that space of go, 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 getting things done, and to just be and be with ourselves and be in that moment so that we can get to a place where we're actually rising and not going through the motions of rising. And I say that because I'm 55 now, and it's only been in the past few years that I've gotten to the point where I actually feel like I'm living. I realized that I was going through the motions of living, but not actually engaged in the process of it. And it's amazing that you can live a lot of life. You can check off a lot of lists and you can still not actually engage in this magnificent opportunity to be alive. There are some other things that I'm gonna read off really quickly because I feel like I'm not gonna be able to wrap this into the narrative the way that I had planned to. I, I want to say that wallowing is not mutually exclusive to rising. Life for me is in cycles, in rotations. So just because something feels like it's on the downbeat right now doesn't mean that it is not good for us because just as another asterisk, um, we, the sun doesn't actually rise like we rotate towards it. That's like one of those things, like once you know, you gotta like say the thing. But it's, it is like going through every day. Equity and justice are important to me. And love is this thing that I'm on now. Five years ago, you would not have found me talking about love in public. I'm probably not love in private either. It's like, you know I love you. We just do the things and that's enough, but it's not enough. We have to say the words and we have to do the action. Love is our link to each other and everything else. There is, for me, there is nothing else but love. That is it. All the other things I, I am appalled at the things that we do as humans to each other and to this existence that we have. And then I'm amazed at the people who suffer through some of the injustices that we inflict, that they still find the audacity to wake up, find a way to get up and do it again. That to me is just one of the most amazing things. For me, to rise is an invitation. It's, it's accepting that we are here for a reason and that in this moment, if I choose to rise, I'm accepting that invitation. With love, everything is possible. The systems that we engage in that make this world what it is was done by people. So if people created it, people can create something else. Just because we weren't here 
when it all got started or when some parts of the system began. And I'm also recalling, I watched Origin last night. Um, so there is a point in there um, where Isabel Wilkerson is talking about um, caste and how we don't support each other. Like if we remove caste, everybody moves into freedom and liberation. So with that, I'm gonna squeeze on to the next thing. So this was taken at Millwork Commons. Uh, I am often inspired as, oh, sunrise, sunset. Uh, it was only about three, four years ago when I realized it's like, oh, the sun. And then the next day it was like, oh, I missed the sunrise. And then the day after that, it's like, oh, look at the sunrise. And then it was about the fourth day. It's like, you know, this happens every day, right? <laughs> like, I was like, and I, I do talk to myself. I was like, oh, I can see the sunrise. Whenever I choose, and sometimes it's cloudy here, but it doesn't mean the sun is rising, it just means that we can't see it. And so I love accepting the invitation every day to get up and engage and watch the sunrise. This was a sunset, Millwork Commons parking lot. And um, I'm showing this because this is the reflection in what is now, I believe, Dolomiti. I'm not sure, it, it wasn't open then, but it's the backside of Millwork Commons, and it's that same sunset, but the reflections, I love reflections. One, being still enough to think about what's happened, but also seeing it, because for me, my lessons come in the doing, but the bigger of the lesson for life and how I incorporate it comes through my reflection. And to see the uh, juxtaposition of that was, this is the same image that you just saw, but it's just reflected back in these panes and it looks a little distorted, but it's still the same. And that perspective to me is important because it's like life. All of us could experience the same thing, but we all see it differently. It, we all reflect on it differently. It, it lives in us in different ways. This was also at, uh, in the small town I, uh, my parents live in, Cachetta. This was on the lake. There's a sunrise. This is in the morning, but there was so much fog, like you couldn't see it. And so I wanted to put this image here because, as I mentioned earlier, just because we, do, we don't see it doesn't mean it's not happening. And as you are going through life and you may uh, go through things that where it may feel like that you are not rising or you're at a standstill, doesn't mean that it's not happening. It just may be that you can't see it in that moment, but you have to learn to trust yourself and your community and the things that root you so that when that moment comes for you to express that you have indeed risen, that you have the evidence of that. So I love bell hooks. Um, my, my word of the year three years ago or two years ago was love and the universe and a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't think was going to happen. But my God, there's so much stuff around love and I'm still on the love train uh, and I've added some other things to it. Um, but the, the thing that I have discovered is that self love is it. I couldn't love. Other, I thought I was loving other people, but I wasn't really doing as much as I could. I was pouring out of a cup that was uh, getting close to bone dry. That's what I knew how to do. And I was just doing And when I took a moment to go, OK, what if I just like feel mine first? What if I pour into me first? What if I give to myself what other people say that I give to them? The game changed, y'all. Sleep became something that was uh, encouraged and protected. I said no to things. I said yes to myself more often. And I spent the time uh, that I needed to pour into me. And the thing is, when I did that, what I gave to people to me felt like less time, but it was more quality. And they loved it even more. I was like, this is a win for all of us. And so it's also a practice. Love. For me, I, I wrote this in my journal one day, um, love for me is a spiritual practice. It has become the thing that I do to cultivate my presence, my being, my purpose for actually being here at this time. And when I do that, it has a 
tremendous impact on everybody around me and everything that I engage in. So I'm offering uh, this quote from Bell Hooks uh, about self-love. It is absolutely the foundation uh, to being here and cultivating a practice. This is a photo of a sunrise walk over the River Seine in Paris in November of 22. My kids uh, who love me dearly, and they like me too, which I did not quite understand until November. Um, I thought that in November, I was tagging along with two of them to go see a concert of a singer that they wanted to see because they were like, mommy, it's near your birthday. Do you want to go? It's either Paris or Milan. I was like, I haven't used my passport. You tell me and I will be there because uh, they grown. Y'all heard that part and they have jobs and their own health insurance and they pay for things. I get to keep my credit card in my bag. Uh, and so they got together. So I have four kids. The two oldest kids live here. They got together with the two youngest kids. One is in St. Paul, one is in Pittsburgh. And they all got tickets. So we all had tickets. And I was about three weeks out. I said, OK, when is the concert? Because I want to make sure that I have my plan for when y'all go to the concert. I'm not going to a concert. I'm just going to Paris. And they said, oh, we're not going to the concert. We didn't get tickets. I was like, huh? Did I miss a group text? Like, why are we going to Paris? And they said, for your birthday. I was like, what? I didn't know y'all liked me like that. So the night before my birthday, we were in this uh, Airbnb and the, my daughters sang happy birthday, the traditional version and the Stevie Wonder version. Uh, and it was recorded and their brothers are like, okay, yeah, it's after midnight, we need to wrap this up. Because the thing that they gave me as a gift was walking from our Airbnb to um, a cafe for a sunrise walk. And so this is the sunrise that I captured. Um, in, and this is like spread out some, but in my phone quality is not as good as what's here, but this is that moment. So I wanted to share that. It's one of my favorite sunrises because I had four of my favorite people with me and doing something that was um, the most, one of the most memorable things I ever had. And it reinforced to me what love means. Like to me, this was love in action. This is in, uh, this is actually from the stairs uh, in my house. I did not realize, like I've lived in this house for over uh, 20 years since 1998. And I did not realize that you can see sunrises from the top of the stairs. And so one morning I was up there doing watering plants or something, I was like, what? I can see this from here. And I just sat there and I took this photo and sent it to the kids in the group chat. And one of the kids responded back, was like, yeah, I love sunrises from that spot. It's like, you have enjoyed this all of this time. No one mentioned this to me. And I was like, well, that's fair because I was the one running around saying I have 20 minutes to be this place and five minutes to be that place. They did not see me modeling drinking in the sunrise. And it is me learning from them and now getting to experience some of the things that they have grown up with, which then reminds me that even though I haven't done all of the things the way that I wanted to as a parent, I can accept the forgiveness that they offered me for the times that I didn't show up the way that I wanted. And now I get to experience some of the things that they appreciate from their childhood. Fannie Lou Hamer, I hear my timer going off, so it's 20 minutes. Uh, I want to, there, I think there's one more after this. Fannie Lou Hamer, if you don't know about her, look her up. Uh, she was a civil rights activist and a farmer uh, in Mississippi, and she developed a co-op to help people, primarily black people, uh, but also people who were poor of any um, race and ethnicity to have housing, food, and to do it together. This is a sunset uh, over by Creighton Prep. Uh, I will chase down a sunset these days. I once drove out, I was at like 
20, I was downtown and drove out to 130 something street trying to get a sunrise shot. But this one, I have to go as far as in the Creighton Prep parking lot uh, one day and it was fantastic. I'm gonna end with this. This is a sunrise in McCook, Nebraska, October of 2022 uh, on the sixth floor of a building. Um, I. I had a whisper to go to McCook. I don't, I tried to just listen and not ask too many questions because the whispers be doing things sometimes. So I went and, uh, and the people that were there changed their schedule two days to be with me. Uh, and I told them how I had gotten into sunrises. And that morning, two different people offered, one to take me over to a, a a ridge near the sand hills to watch the sunrise, another one from the sixth floor of this building. So I opted for the sixth floor of this building and it was fantastic. And it's one of my most favorite things. And I will tell you about that McCook trip sometime, uh, maybe over coffee or cocktails. Uh, but in this room when I, so this was the day that I left McCook, uh, the day before I had entered this room for the first time and within 30 minutes, of being, stepping off the elevator, the uh, owner took me to um, an image that had been painted by a nonverbal person. And I was, what, I was looking at the photo and at, the, at the, the painting and I was like, I, why is my face wet? And I was weeping. And I didn't know why, except that there was some sort of communication in that space. So this has a special meaning for me because it's also part of this journey of me allowing myself to be myself and feel those feelings and lean into what does it mean to rise. And so I'm going to say, feel the feelings, live and rise. Thank you.